One of Travis Scott's biggest strengths as an artist is his ear for great production. Breaking into the world of music as a producer first and foremost gave him a leg up against his peers. He was the kid who played piano, but then decided it wasn't going to get him any girls, so he switched up and started making beats. But those beats propelled him into a world that anyone at his age or any age would kill for. What would propel Travis into a higher stratosphere was his many mentors who took him under their wings. Already talented and proficient with drum programming, Kanye found much use for Scott in the production of Cruel Summer and later on, Yeezus. For someone like Kanye, who found drums to be his Achilles heel, Scott's drum programming was a breath of fresh air. If you listen to the, my Sonics, they wouldn't compare to anything that Dilla was doing or anything that Dr. Dre was doing or anything that Swiss Beast was doing or anything that Pharrell was doing. My drums are actually my Achilles heel. So what you guys got to understand, it's like Yeezus is an exercise in drums and mixes. We still be redoing the drums to this day. We still redo the drums. So can't tell me nothing. Can't tell me don't knock like, it don't knock like Mike Will. It don't knock like Travis Scott. Is it safe to say that you are probably the influence behind Yeezy or because he went super dark and i know kanye never does the same shit every year yeah he goes like he, either he, he elevates into some other shit and right now you're like your type of music is like maybe 20 years ahead of our time it's like yeah. I, I said it before it's like watching a, a, a fucking star wars movie you hear the beats in the fucking in the bar niggas is wiggling <laughs> i think that's where you guys are at but do you think like that do you think 20 years ahead yeah man you know with yeezus man like i feel like that shit is like Way ahead of what niggas thinking. Like I was just having this argument the other day. I've been when the, when the Yeezus album. I'm, I know he had joints on there like Guilt Trip. I know that was like oh like old joint. I heard that joint for first first time in Hawaii. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like you know, I you know I did the drums. Like I redid the drums. Uh, S1 did the drums, the original drums in there. But like those new drums that's on there, I redid those and shit. Why are drums hard for you? Well, now they're not hard because that Yeezus bang. Scott was someone who prided himself on using many digital audio workstations, except for Fruity Loops, as he felt that the sounds that came out of the program were weak and oversaturated in the music coming out at the time. He has since seemingly accepted the software for some situations. Anthony Kilhoffer, Kanye's longtime engineer, was managing Travis early on in his career and became his connection to Kanye, which led to him being signed to good music as a producer. And Travis's production hasn't stopped at the Ye Camp. He has production credits with Jay-Z, Drake, T.I., Madonna, John Legend, and Rihanna, just to name a few. Travis emphasizes that drums must come first in his music production. What is the most long drums. to take? The drums? drums. The drums. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. You hear me? Nothing, bro. Nothing. I don't care. It's all about the drums. The drums, bro. Don't fuck up the drums. You can do everything but fuck up. Just don't fuck up the drum. And then, your melody and shit, and then we can close out. Me and this guy, Alan Ritter, made that. Uh, he made that beat. Uh, he started the dum, dum, dum. And man, it happened just on accident. Like, we was working on something else, and the nigga, like, hit the first two chords. I'm like, no, this is it, man. It was like, boom, boom, boom. That's why I just, like, so, I just, like, went to the mic, and I was like, she a porn star, girl, oh, I'm from the valley. And I was like, nah, nah, dun, dun, uh, oh, give me. I was like, I need to make the song from when I travel. Like, what is the vibe from when I travel from Texas to like LA? Like, in that 90210, I also like look at it like a, as an art piece, right? How do you fit all these things in? It's just not like, you know, 808, snare, vocals music stuck in the back you know like you know just instead of having the synth that comes out of the synthesizer you know it's already made it stereo image right maybe it shouldn't be that stereo because it's going to hog up too much space in, in your mix maybe it should be more mono maybe it should be 100 percent mono maybe it should be a little bit more mono and lean to the left a little bit and the other synth that is playing kind of the same melody is a little bit or twice as wide and, and lean to the right. Anthony Kilhoffer's viewpoint on production really falls in line with the type of sounds that have been curated for Travis's projects. This mentality was heavily used in the production of Yeezus, and Travis was very much a part in executing that very philosophy of production. But great production is not simply limited to the instrumental itself. There is still much to be done in the mixing and manipulating of vocal performances, especially in an age when the use of autotune has basically become a rite of passage for every new artist. 
Travis needed to do something to stand out. Informed by his rock influences, Travis has employed a unique approach to his vocals by using autotune-like harmonizing effects and using just the right amount of overdrive and distortion, tuning it to at times emulate the wailing of a guitar. This can be heard in his performance in the song The Ends, which is the opening track of his sophomore album Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight. I've been on a long way Only you can stand my mind. The technique was made popular after Kanye distorted his vocals in his hit song Runaway, mimicking a gritty guitar solo. Mike Dean's veteran experience has guided Travis to great sonic destinations as well. With Dean's instrumentation, flourishing synthesizers, and expert mixing, Dean has demanded the best from Travis, even so much as to delay the completion of Birds in the Trap saying McKnight, emphasizing that he cares far more about a perfect mix rather than met deadlines or expectations. But his ear for composition as well as traditional hip-hop formed a satisfying hybrid. His artistry, being informed by a classical background, has accented his new music. I mean, I knew music theory from like a little kid, so when I'm playing the notes, I know what chords it's making, you know. Mm -hmm. A live instrumentalist who is not afraid of technology, Dean has thought out of the box in many impressive ways. One of his signatures as of late involves his guitar solo skills, but his unique approaches, including running electric guitars through autotune and other harmonizing effects, show his sense of innovation. I went all virtual on my guitar live now, it's kind of neat. Play through Ableton, guitar rig, and Oh, how cool is that? Harmony engine, and auto tune, all kinds of crazy effects. Auto tune works good on guitar. The flexibility. You can't play a wrong note. You can just you hit the memory bar and go, and it plays the scale. He also embraces modular synths and other analog equipment. So, in the pursuit of innovation, he has no reservations against embracing the tried and true tools of the past. And this is something that Travis has held on to as well being an artist who loves analog musical instruments and tools as well as digital ones. You know, we come from that whole, like, study of just, like, those times where shit was just analog. Mm. And I love that. I still go by that to this day. Even though I'm from the digital world, I still think it's an importance in, of knowing, like, analog shit, knowing how to do shit on hand. I still use it to this day. It's like, it's part of me. It's just my liking, you know? Mm. Um, Mike Dean has also played live in Travis's shows, embellishing his hits with improvised melodies on the keys that have bolstered already captivating songs like Goosebumps. She fall through plenty, her and all her guineas. Yeah, we at the top floor right there off Duhini. Travis once thought he knew what being a producer was, getting friends to rap over a beat and mixing it all together. But that was an engineer's mindset. It wasn't until he saw this video of Kanye making beats that Travis realized how hands-on he needed to be. The fact that he has been able to grow into a young artist living in the perfect storm of mentorship by some of the greatest musical minds in popular music is a privilege that many could never dream to receive. And one of the greatest mediums for Travis to showcase his music is through his live stage shows. His music is created, mixed, and mastered to be the lifeblood of his energetic concerts. It sounds great in a car, and is also especially captivating in person. As a result, Travis has fine-tuned a sound ever so lively, but still steeped in the most nocturnal moods, this side of Noah Forty's production with Drake. But this isn't nocturnal in the sense of being muted or subdued. This is about the edgy nightlife, not the lullaby version. With it, Travis has crafted his world with care and guidance. But as much of a well-oiled machine his production team is, Travis still has a soft spot for the do-it-yourself approach. If you can do it by yourself, oh my god, do it by yourself. Home Studios is the most lit shit of all time, dude. Trust me, I'm doing albums in my crib. I, I kind of like come up with ideas and shit in the most weirdest places because I feel like that's where, it's, that's where it's at. I genuinely hate studios nowadays. Why do you say that? Um, it's cold at all times. It's like shit don't work fast enough. It's too much space. Mm. I just like shit loud. Sometimes the sub. It's just like, you know, shit like that. Mm. And it's not true to sound. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, it's kind of very misleading. You know, so you turn the music up very loud there. It sounds very good. Then you go in the car, it just sounds all fucking low. 
I, and Mike, Mike just told me about a plug-in that he got oh. that Travis Scott record as loud as everything I've ever heard. I'm not going to mention it. This is the loudest album I've ever heard. We're going <laughs> to talk. We're definitely going to talk. I remember back in the day, like, Chronic 2001 was the reference yeah, yeah. for how loud to be. Yeah. And it hit minus eight on the VU scale. And I thought that, that was my reference for like 10 years. <laughs> then I started doing 7.5, then 7. And I thought that Talking was about RMS, hit. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Travis's album goes to like 4.5. Wow. But it has served him well as Travis has learned to create worlds of sound, but no longer by being the only one at the boards. His mentors have taught him the art of curation, and it is this pillar of creative direction that has been the greatest key to his success. Great production was on his side. His mentors and collaborators began to overflow with ideas and potential, which left him with the greatest task of any prolific auteur of music. How to possibly put it all together? More about Travis and the art of curation next time in part four.